Hello and welcome to Wolfman Gaming. This is my Ghost Runner 2 walkthrough and this is mission 16 called Elevator Maintenance. Because Jack is a very versatile Ghost Runner. Not only is he great at parkour, killing and driving crotch rockets, he can also be used as a janitor. <laughs> No, but we need to go up to... We are hot on the tail of Mitra. This is the second to last normal level in the game. The last one, as I think I mentioned in a previous video, there are 18 levels in this game. So there's this and level 17. And the last one is the final boss fight. But before we get to the final fight against Mitra, we need to, as I said, get through this level among others <laughs> and this level is quite challenging these last two levels the game really throws everything it has at you as games usually do towards end game since the f uh, main villain is usually starting to get quite nervous at this point because you are close to beating it so they want a big finale but this level can be made much easier by you doing the correct preparations and if you watch the description before this level when you go into the hub in between level 15 and 16 make sure to buy the modifier called sharpen blade which uh, allows you to slash through a blocking enemy and that comes with the drawback that it costs 40 percent of your stamina and I really don't understand what that means because <laughs> losing 40% of my stamina even though I've done like 7 playthroughs of this game at this point, that has never become a factor. But with the enforcer enemies, dudes with the electric or laser riot shields, you can slash straight through those shields and that much, that pro highly outweighs any cons for installing it and also make sure to install ultimate booster 1 and 2 because uh, towards the end of this level we will be unlocking i will show you where you can unlock the trophy called scorch squad for killing at least eight enemies with one use of the flux ability but to be able to do that you have to have those two boosters installed and i also highly recommend that you unlock a modifier called glass vampire because the glass vampire skill it will double your combo but it will disable blocking so you can install sharpened blade and ultimate booster one and two before the start of this level or in at the start of this level uh, I mentioned that before, if you press the big button on the middle of your controller, you can switch out modifiers as you choose. And if you have a hard time fitting them in, because there are only like five different lines in the motherboard, there is also a modifier which allows you to bypass that, so you can install mods of different types in the same circuit lines or whatever you want to call it. But make sure to have Sharpened Blade and Ultimate Booster 1 and 2 from the start of this level and have Glass Vampire prepared. If you're feeling a little bit ballsy, you can actually install Glass Vampire at the beginning. And if you haven't unlocked it before, if then you will unlock the trophy called uh, the Old School Way for going through an entire level without blocking. So that can be a bonus, but I would, <laughs> as a, at this point quite seasoned player of this game, I would recommend that you don't install Glass Vampire just yet. Make sure that you're still able to block incoming bullets or even parry them because makes things so much easier if you send the bullets return to sender like Elvis Presley once sang. And in this level, if you have followed this entire walkthrough and picked up all the memory shards I have done along the way, in this level will also be where you will unlock the trophy called 001101 something something something. <laughs> I 
I've talked about that trophy that I can't remember what it's called. It's a bunch of binary numbers. And it wouldn't surprise me if you were to put those binary numbers into some kind of a converter. It probably spells out a word or something. If it doesn't, I would be actually a little bit... A little bit disappointed. <laughs> but either way, let's see, how many memory shards do we still need after this one? Just one left. And I've talked about that when it comes to memory shards. If you haven't picked up every single one that I pick up, that is still fine because there is one more level after this one. And uh, I've talked about that, that in this game there are more shards than what is actually needed. I think it is that you need 50 memory shards in total to get up to level 8 on the motherboard. But there are 80 memory shards throughout the entire game. Some can be gotten from challenges. And as you have seen throughout this walkthrough, they are also found scattered throughout these levels. But going into this fight, over here you want to make a hard right and go on this booster pad. Because I think the absolute easiest way to take on this fight is going in a counterclockwise motion, take out this Scorchman. I'm thinking maybe you could use the Scorchman to take out these... Uh, what they're called specters because these are like the downgraded version of they are not as angelic looking <laughs> as the specters in the first encounter against Rahu but now that all the specters are taken down and also the enforcer up on this second level we can just go down take out the last scorchman and the other enforcer and you see how much easier they are to take out when you have the perk installed or the modifier installed that allows you to slash through the shields and as I've said the fact that you lose 40% stamina in my opinion that is never a factor it has never factored in for me the only time the stamina system that the uh, that they start with in this game has I think become a hindrance or a factor. By the way, make sure you have the shadow skill here. So you can just go through the search lasers of these spider bots. But the only time I think throughout this game that the stamina becomes a factor, as I said, is when, uh, when you're trying to get through a section that is just parkour based. There are no enemies, you just want to make it through quick. For example, towards the end of uh, what is it, mission 5 or something there is a long room you know where I had my first really shitty edit <laughs> throughout my videos then there is a section where it's just you have to get through it no enemies no hindrances nothing then the stamina going down can be a little bit annoying I think they could have something similar to no you know Elden Ring the From Software game because there you also have a stamina bar but when you are in non-combat situations where there are no enemies no hostiles around which doesn't happen all that often <laughs> it is a very hostile environment the lands between and Limgrave and whatever all the names of the different areas but it's great that when you are in those non-hostile sequences that you can actually keep good pace so that is something if I were part of the development team in this game I would that is something I would change but that is a very minor thing I think overall this game for me it is a solid eight eight and a half out of ten because I think it's so much fun I think it's very well designed all the levels pillars of creation is a little bit on the long side i talked about that that i would have made made the environment environment a lot less desolate a lot i would have 
like to have more enemies, more things to do in that level because it is basically a big empty sandbox in between the three different towers with one or two exceptions if you're going for the challenge but either way uh, yes it is a really fun game and by the way now we're getting very close to the very last memory shard that we need to pick up to unlock the trophy so what we do here is make a left and pull down this little platform and go up. And there we have it, motherboard is up at maximum level and this unlocks motoric overheat. Which quite interesting ultimate ability because that allows you, that allows Jack to move faster, jump further and all that stuff for a limited amount of time. And throughout all my playthroughs, <laughs> I have used that skill once. By the way, this can be a little finicky. Make sure to jump so you jump over his little rocket because he will usually throw or shoot one rocket that lands down on the grind rail and that can kill you. It, throughout these playthroughs, it has killed me a surprising amount of times. <laughs> so make sure you jump. Shadow can work, but it can be a little bit tricky because uh, if you activate it too soon, you will become visible before you come up close to him. And if you activate it too late, he will see you before you activate it. But now is the point, if you haven't installed Glass Vampire yet, now is the point to do it, because the fight we are going to use it uh, is coming up. It's the very next fighting sequence. So make sure you have ultimate boost of 1 and 2, and a full ultimate ability meter, and uh, glass vampire. So I'm just going to gap jam over to this, and then we're going to head up to the right like so and as soon as you land move around the corner and activate flux there are a total of 10 enemies there so if you have glass vampire installed that will count as 20 enemies and then you will unlock the trophy you reach the right number for getting a plus or getting a 15 hit combo at least and also unlocking Scorch Squad, which is a very hard word to say. Scorch Squad for killing at least enemies, at least eight enemies for uh, in one use of Flux. And make sure as soon as you have taken out that first wave up here in the right corridor, uninstall Glass Vampire again. <laughs> Take that out of your motherboard, unless you feel that this game, I think that the game at this point is not challenging enough. But now, most of the combat in this level, or I think actually all combat in this level, is done. So now we're gonna focus on this level is called Elevator Maintenance, and that is what we're gonna do at this point. <laughs> It was a long trek to get up to the faulty elevator because we need to access that to get up to the level no where Mitra this. is hiding. So the first thing we are going to do of course is go up here and pull down this platform. And going through this vent and out to the elevator shaft. This is very easy because now all we have to do out here is to clear this shaft of a bunch of spider enemies. I like to go up here on this booster pad, try to gain as much height as possible and just slowly work my way down. You can look in here and pull them out like so. Be very careful when you are peeking down into the shaft because if you take one step too far in there, you will fall down. And that can spell death. If you fall into one of those spider bots, you will die. But that is also one of those things. If you're feeling ballsy, <laughs> jump down the inside of the shaft and uh, 
move out through one of these door openings. Because spider bots will not move unless they catch you in their searchlight, then they will lunge at you and and uh, kill themselves and hopefully for them, you in the process. So make sure you stay out of that searchlight and don't get clocked. <laughs> But now that all the spider bots are uh, cleared out, all we have to do is go around here, What's make a hard left, anyway? and activate the elevator. And What's now we can head for the exit and go into the very last level before the final boss. So I hope you're ready for... Uh, because we are getting very close to the end credits at this point. And I hope you've enjoyed your journey through the Ghost Runner 2 universe thus far. But I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in my next video. So until next time, this is the Wolfman signing off.